This is a production of World Video Bible School. To God be the glory. Welcome to our scriptural study of time as it pertains to biblical history. My name is John Hall. I'm glad you're joining us for our seventh lesson in this series. My prayer is these studies will be a great benefit to your personal study of God's Word. In our first lesson, we examined two questions. Why study the Bible with respect to time? And why did God create time? In our second lesson, we started our timeline on the patriarchy with a particular focus on the books of Genesis and Job. In our third lesson, we examine Exodus through Deuteronomy from Egypt to Jordan. It marked our transition from the first dispensation into the second dispensation, the Mosaic Law. In our fourth lesson, we examine the work of Joshua after the death of Moses through the period of the Judges. This period ended with God's prophet Samuel anointing Saul to be Israel's first king. In our fifth lesson, we studied Israel under the United Kingdom, followed by Judah and Israel under the Divided Kingdom. Israel eventually went into Assyrian captivity, while much of Judah was exiled to Babylon. Previously, we saw Judah being transplanted to Babylon in several groups and over a span of about 20 years. We next saw the Jewish return to Jerusalem in three groups, and over a span of almost 100 years. Over the course of this lesson, we reach the chronological end of the books of history found in the Old Testament, and we conclude the book of Nehemiah. In this lesson, we will be examining the last portion of inspired books found in the Old Testament, the prophets. We will be discussing more than just the prophets who penned Old Testament books, though. Prophets who do not have books bearing their names will also make our timeline. The work of the prophet was vital in God's plan. So vital was it that this dispensation came to be known as the law and the prophets. A prophet is simply someone who speaks for someone else. Jehovah told Moses, Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1, when he would speak unto Pharaoh, Exodus 7 verse 2. Because of this design, there would also come false prophets claiming to speak for those who did not commission them to speak. For example, God warns the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, was to be put to death. For the purpose of our timeline, we are most interested in faithful prophets of God. We actually have already noted some prophets on our timeline. Abraham is called a prophet in Genesis 20 and verse 7. As are Moses, Deuteronomy 34 and verse 10, Samuel, 1 Samuel 3 and verse 20, and David, 2 Samuel 23 and the first two verses. Some prophets wrote the words of God down. For example, the words of David are called Scripture by the apostle Peter in Acts 1, verses 16 and 17. God himself told Moses to write his words down in a book, Exodus 17 and verse 14, as he similarly instructs Isaiah, Isaiah 30, verses 7 and 8. We are going to organize the prophets we study in this lesson, however, by time. We're going to find that some of our prophets were contemporaries with one another. Many times this will be because they're being sent to different audiences in different places. However, from time to time, it is also necessary that one prophet rebuke another prophet. Truly, the wisdom and forethought of God is seen in this system of prophets. Let's first review some of the prophets we've already covered in previous books, beginning with the prophets who served God under the period of the kings. We've already seen the prophet Samuel, whose work as a prophet escalated first under the reign of King Saul, 
1 Samuel 8. He would die having condemned Saul and anointed David as the next king over Israel. 1 Samuel 25 and verse 1. Our next prophet is a man named Gad. Though he would begin his work before Samuel died, 1 Samuel 22 and verse 5, we are going to put his work under the reign of David. He will work with David fairly deep into David's reign, found in 2 Samuel 24. He is called David's seer in 2 Samuel 24 and verse 11 and is the one who corrects David for numbering Israel when God did not ask him to. Contemporary with Gad, during the reign of David, comes our next prophet, Nathan. Nathan would be active even to the death of David, 1 Kings chapter 1, having anointed Solomon as David's replacement. He is perhaps best known for being the prophet sent by God to convict David of his sins concerning Uriah and Bathsheba, found in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Also active during this time was a prophet named Zadok. Zadok is called a seer in 2 Samuel 15 and verse 27, who is best known, however, for his work as a priest of God. The name Zadok in our Greek New Testament is translated Sadok in Matthew 1 and verse 14, from where the sect called the Sadducees probably chose their name. Also during the period of David served another man called the king's seer, 1 Chronicles 25 and verse 5. His name was He-Man, and David gave him special service in the music of tabernacle worship. As already noted, this prophet would probably pen the 88th Psalm. Our next prophet would serve under the rule of Rehoboam. The prophet Shemaiah was sent to Rehoboam, 2 Chronicles 12 and verse 5, to instruct him to stop fighting against Israel. Shemaiah was probably responsible for writing the portion of the Chronicles of the Kings that covered Rehoboam's reign as covered in 2 Chronicles 12 and verse 15. Contemporary with Shemaiah and responsible for chronicling the acts of Jeroboam as king over Israel, also found in 2 Chronicles 12 and verse 15, the prophet Ido went also to chronicle. He chronicled the acts of King Abijah, who was the king of Judah after Rehoboam. 2 Chronicles 13 and verse 22. Also contemporary with Ido was the prophet Ahijah, who did most of his work prophesying to King Jeroboam, 1 Kings 11 and verse 29. Our next two prophets were father and son. Though they prophesied during the same period, Hanani, the father, prophesied to Judah during the reign of Asa, while Jehu, the son, prophesied to Israel under the corresponding reign of Basha. 1 Kings 16 and verse 1. Here's one of those lesser-known families in Scripture who were following the will and commandment of God. You don't have to be well-known to be obedient. On the other end of the spectrum, this brings us to the far more renowned work of Elijah the prophet. Elijah prophesied to Israel under the reign of King Ahab and his wife Jezebel, 1 Kings 18 and verse 1. Following Ahab's death and immediately before Elijah was taken up into the heavens, Elijah also prophesied to Ahab's replacement, King Ahaziah. 2 Kings chapter 1 and verse 2, telling him he would surely die soon. Before Elijah left, he gave a double portion of his spirit, 2 Kings 2 and verse 9, to the man who would take up his mantle after him. This gave Elisha a double portion in comparison to the other prophets of that day. Reference Deuteronomy 21 verses 16 through 17 the results of which were obvious even to the other prophets, 2 Kings 2 and verse 15. Elisha would prophesy to Israel under the reign of Jehoram, 2 Kings chapter 3. 
we now arrive at our first group of prophets who have preserved books in our Old Testament bearing their names. Scripture records the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Berai, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 1. The first chronologically from this list would have been Jeroboam the second over Israel. We will start Hosea's work under this reign and extend it all the way to Hezekiah king over Judah. Evidence seemed to point toward the prophet Jonah also being contemporary during the reign of Jeroboam the second. Scripture says, in the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned forty and one. Second Kings 14 and verse 23. It continues, He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant, Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet which is of Gath-hefer. Though Jonah is best known for his prophesying in Nineveh, it should be recognized that Jonah did not live in Nineveh. He lived in the territory of Zebulun in Gath-hefer from where he fled to Tarshish, Jonah 1 and verse 3, to avoid prophesying to a Gentile nation. Apparently, Jonah also prophesied to Israel during the days of King Jeroboam II. Also during this period, in the reign of Uzziah, prophesied Amos. Scripture records the words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Amos chapter 1 and verse 1. Amos was a herdman of Tekoa, which was a city in Judah, according to Nehemiah chapter 3 and verse 5. The prophet Isaiah would also be starting his work in this period. Scripture records the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Isaiah 1 and verse 1. Thus we will begin his work under the reign of Uzziah and extend it all the way to the reign of Hezekiah. Isaiah was apparently responsible for chronicling the acts of Uzziah, according to 2 Chronicles 26 and verse 22, as well as the acts of Hezekiah, 2 Chronicles 32 and verse 32. Prophesying at the same time as Isaiah, but beginning later, our next prophet is Micah. Scripture records the word of the Lord that came to Micah the Morishthite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Micah chapter 1 and verse 1. And so Micah's work will begin under the reign of Jotham and extend to the reign of Hezekiah. Our next prophet will be Oded. This was a prophet who prophesied to Judah under the reign of Ahaz, king of Judah. 2 Chronicles 28 and verse 9. This makes him contemporaries with Hosea, Isaiah, and Micah. Following the work of Hosea, Isaiah, Micah, and Oded, Scripture moves to the reign of Josiah for our next prophet. Scripture records the word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah the son of Cushai in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 1. As we've already seen, Josiah reigned for 31 years, 2 Kings 22 and verse 1, so that it should be no surprise that Zephaniah had a contemporary prophet with him. Jeremiah begins his book, the words of Jeremiah, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, 
in the 13th year of his reign. Jeremiah 1, verses 1 and 2. Jeremiah would prophesy all the way to the reign of King Zedekiah. 2 Chronicles 36, verses 11 and 12. Jeremiah would also pen the book we call Lamentations. In this book, he would lament for the death of Josiah and the upcoming captivity of Judah. 2 Chronicles 35 and verse 25. Our next prophet I have chosen to place under the reign of Jehoahaz. The book of Habakkuk seems to give some evidence of its time period, though it is not named explicitly. The first piece of evidence is that Habakkuk prophesied immediately before the Babylonian captivity. He records, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Habakkuk 1 and verse 6. This would happen during his days. Chapter 1 and verse 5. Our second piece of evidence is that he prophesied during a time when Judah had returned to disobedience again. Chapter 1 and verse 4. This would place his work after the time of King Josiah, during which time Judah had returned to the Lord. Therefore, I have placed Habakkuk between King Josiah and King Jehoiakim under the reign of Jehoahaz. Our next prophet has a very well-documented period of prophecy. The prophet Daniel would begin his account by recording events under the third year of Jehoiakim, Daniel 1 and verse 1. This is where we will begin his work. Daniel will continue to serve God as a prophet all the way to the time of Darius the Mede, Daniel 5.31 and Daniel 11 and verse 1. The prophet Ezekiel reveals the time during which he would prophesy when he says his visions were in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives, Ezekiel 1 and verse 1. He further points out it was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, Ezekiel 1 and verse 2. This well establishes his prophesying to be under the reign of King Zedekiah. It should also be noted, based on 2 Chronicles 36, verses 11 and 12, this is also the last period Jeremiah the prophet would be working. The prophet Haggai reveals he prophesied in the second year of Darius the king unto Zerubbabel, Haggai chapter 1 and verse 1, solidifying his period of work under King Darius the first. The prophet Zechariah, too, reveals his work as taking place in the second year of Darius, Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 1. He will be beside Haggai under the reign of Darius the first. Let's see how all these look on our timeline. These are the prophets over Israel and Judah whose periods of prophecy are either explicitly given to us or at least a fairly close approximation can be reached. Let's look at some of the other prophets who are not quite as explicit with their time periods and place them as best we can in our timelines. For arriving at a time period for the prophet Joel, it is required that we read more into the content of the book than just the introduction. In particular, Joel prophesies of coming destructions. First, Joel would prophesy of the desolation of both Egypt and Edom. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Joel chapter 3 and verse 19. These are the same pending judgments Ezekiel would foretell in chapter 25, 13, and chapter 29, and verse 9. This would put his prophecies before the reign of Zedekiah. Additionally, he prophesies of the destruction of Jerusalem, Joel 2, verses 1 and 2. 
and its captivity that would allow that would follow after that in chapter 3 and verse 1 this would be put his prophecies before the reign of Jehoiakim also of note is the fact that during the authorship of this book Tyre and Sidon were at odds with Judah chapter 3 and verse 4 Tyre and Sidon had a good relationship with Israel and Judah during the time of Solomon, 2 Chronicles 2 and verse 3, on through the reign of Ahab, whose wife Jezebel was herself of Sidon, 1 Kings 16 and verse 31, and again by the time of the return from Babylon, Ezra 3 and verse 7. Therefore, there must have been a period in between Ahab and Jehoiakim when Judah was at odds with Tyre and Sidon. Amos prophesies of such a relationship between Tyre and Judah in Amos 1 and verse 9, which would put it under the time of Uzziah, chapter 1 and verse 1. For these reasons, I have chosen to put Joel prophesying the time of Amos. I'll put an asterisk beside his name indicating this is simply a reasoned approximation. Jewish tradition has Joel prophesying during the, the time of King Manasseh we can at least reason when he did not prophesy. Next, let's consider the prophet Nahum. Nahum was the other prophet for Nineveh, Nahum 1 and verse 1. He would prophesy of Nineveh's coming punishment in chapter 3 and verse 7. This would place his work after the work of Jonah, during which time Nineveh had repented. The evidence seemed to point toward him being contemporary with the prophet Zephaniah. Zephaniah prophesies, And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 13. For this reason, we will put Nahum prophesying at the same time as Zephaniah during the reign of King Josiah. Our next prophet to consider is the prophet Obadiah. Much like the prophet Joel, Obadiah is probably best placed based on the content of his prophecies. Obadiah was a prophet for Edom, chapter 1 and verse 1, and spoke of their, their coming punishment, chapter 1 and verse 9. The struggle that began between Jacob and Esau continues with their descendants. That same struggle will continue on into the time of Jesus and Herod, Matthew 2, verses 2 and 3. The closest prophecy to this would be given by the prophet Ezekiel. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom. Ezekiel 25, verses 12 and 13. For this reason, we are going to place Obadiah alongside Ezekiel during the reign of King Zedekiah. The final prophet we should consider is also the final prophet in our current Old Testaments. Malachi, rivaled perhaps only by Joel, is the most difficult to pinpoint. The portion I found interesting, the sequence of his prophecies, is found in response to their fourth and fifth questions of the Jews directed against God. The Jews asked, Wherein shall we return? Malachi 3 and verse 7. And wherein have we robbed thee? Malachi 3 and verse 8. God responds by revealing the Jews were robbing God by their abuse of tithes and offerings. He continues, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. In verse 10. This description seems the most similar to the Jews under Artaxerxes I. Nehemiah records, And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place, then brought all Judah and the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto treasuries. Nehemiah 13, verses 10 through 12. For this reason, I have chosen to place Malachi last on our timeline during the reign of Artaxerxes I.
We have now placed every prophet and hence every book of the Old Testament on our timeline. Though we have not technically added any additional progress in time, and therefore we are still at 3,593 years past creation, we have added a lot of information to our timeline. This concludes our seventh section of this study. During this portion of our study, we have examined the vital portion of Old Testament history marked by the prophets of God. These prophets ranged in time from Abraham all the way to Malachi. This also marks the end of inspired history until we pick up again with John the Baptizer preaching in the wilderness. I pray that you join us for the next portion of our study where we focus in on the intertestamental period involving the Grecian and Roman kingdoms. We will also in this study go back and make notes on the Gregorian dates for our timeline. Thank you for your attention and may God bless your studies of his word.